I remember the uniformed sales assistant would give a deft twirl of the wrist and an arc of colour and pattern would hurl itself through the air to cover the clinical expanse of the cutting table. With a gentle sigh, the fabric would settle down into itself, revealing itself, becoming itself, readying itself for our robust appraisal and putative purchase. And so I am come, in my own time and of my own volition, to this cutting table, dragging the debilitating weight of my violation. No exuberant arc for me. Heaving the great bulk of my anger and pain, I drag my reluctance into the daylight. It is hard to pry open the stranglehold of my complex tangles, but my scissors are eager and sharp with longing. My fingers itch, and I shall begin, and I shall finish. Swathes of musty sackcloth snake dustily into the sunlight. I have worn this for so long. I touch the scratchy fibres with distaste, feeling for one last time the torment and the shame. It is time now. The scissors hiss, and with the gentlest goodbye kiss, I shear away the weight of years. Next, the worn-out doormat unfurls its unbearable acceptance, and I flare with unaccustomed anger. I will tolerate no more trampling, no more turning your stamping temper on me. The matting is heavy and thick, claggy with disdain. It stubbornly resists the healing slice of the blades, but I am adamantine, and at last I am freed of its weight and filth. With due reverence for its endurance, I place it on the counter, not wanting to see it on the floor once more, waiting resignedly to be downtrodden. This I do promise you, I find myself saying, no one will set foot upon you ever again. Kid skin, deceptively, buttery soft to my touch. Yet I know its familiar obscenity for what it is. It is the scapegoat skin to wrap the baby scapegoat in. I untwine yards of hair shirt, then chains of materials for muzzles, for disguises and masks. Foul rags for foot bindings and fetters and straps, for corsets and cinches, each <coughs> one prescribed for misshaping that which it encases. I allow the skin of my fingers to taste each repulsive texture one last time, knowing now that I will tolerate the spiteful pinch and scratch and itch of such no longer. I am choosing to be stronger than all your constraints that I seemingly embraced so complicitly for so much of my life. As I cut each one loose, letting it go, slithering down to the floor to curl around my feet, my lightness grows. I breathe with increasing ease until I know I am safe to relinquish my scissors at last. Knee deep in my spooling past, I stand and reach with tentative fingers to gently touch the very fabric of my being. I am seeing myself with new eyes, true eyes, that perceive how the struggles of my past have found this possibility of freedom, of living. And so, I have painstakingly cut myself free, amputating the cancerous skeins of myself, until here is the truth of me now, laid out like a piece of plain silk, fragile and strong. I see the structure of my warp, my weft, and with all that has been cut away, I am relieved to see that there is yet something of me left to play with. <clears throat> Clothing myself in my newness, my cleanness, my health, I settle into myself with sighs of astonishment at my delicate lace, my space, my form. Owning it all, I am at home in this new cut of my jib. Owning it all, I gather up my remnants carefully bandaging with each the suffering it caused me, that twisted and warped me out of my true shape. <clears throat> nothing will be discarded, nothing lost or overlooked. Nothing will be left behind, nothing forgotten. Every last grievous thread is part of me. 
In my magical French linen press, where I keep my crafting, gilding flakes and feathers, sealing wax and flowers, beads and gems and charms and powers, I will put away these pieces of my life, myself, ritually store them, surrounding them with beauty, with creativity, hoping for their healing. They are too hard to live with, and yet, hard won, they deserve respect, and to be closely kept, as they leak out and stain me, overwhelm me once again. And let me tell you this, whatever the colours and patterns that I am drawn to, I will adorn and embellish myself for my own pleasing. It will be of my choosing. I will do no more conforming. I am becoming myself. And I find myself becoming. And whatever else I may or may not do, I will not shrink. I will not crumple. And I will not fold. Thank you. <laughs>